I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on limits. We will discuss trigonometric functions now. We need to evaluate limit of the following functions. Limit when x approaches 0 for sin ax over bx. Limit when x approaches 0 for sin ax over sin bx. And limit when x approaches 0 for 1 minus cos ax divided by 1 minus cos bx. You can always pause the video and look into my suggestions. Now we are going to use the fundamental limit which is limit x approaches 0 for sin x over x is always equal to 1 and in this particular limit x is in radians. Right? You can now pause the video answer these questions. One more thing which is very important to understand is a formula which will be applied in, in part C and the formula is basically converting the expression 1 minus cos ax into the form of sin ax, right? So I hope you remember that uh, uh, cos 2x can be written as 1 minus 2 sin square x, right? So if you rearrange this formula, then you could always write 2 sine square x is equal to 1 minus cos 2x, right? So that is what you could always write it as. So this is x is half of this. You get the idea, right? So this is 2x here on the right side for cosine as you have, have here. So 1 minus cos x. So that means that 1, let me write here, 1 minus cos ax is going to be equal to what? It is going to be half of ax. So it is going to be equal to 2 sin square ax by 2. Perfect. So I think uh, that will help you to uh, easily find limits of these functions and uh, I hope you see how they are all related. Now let me take the very first one right here. We will find the limit as x approaches 0 for sine ax over bx. So the idea is to get it in this form, right? Let's say sine theta over theta, same argument. So we could always write this as, let me write here now, we could write this as limit x approaches 0. Now we want ax, right? So we could write sine of ax. So out of these two terms, x is there which we need, we'll keep it here, and this b will keep it away, as such it is a constant. Now to get a, what can I do? I can multiply and divide by a. Do you see that strategy? Now this helps to get ax. Perfect. So this is a very critical step uh, which will be applied in all the three examples. Now we could write this as limit x approaches 0 and here we get the term sine ax over ax. That's what we wanted, right? Bringing this a here times a over b. Since we know that the limit of this part is 1, we get our solution which is a over b. Perfect. So that is how we are going to find the limit of the given expressions, all three of them. So you can now pause the video, answer your questions and then look into my suggestions. So now we need to find the limit when x approaches 0 for sine ax divided by sine bx. So we could write this as limit x approaches 0. Now I'll rewrite this as sine of ax, let us say just 1, right, times 1 over sine bx. Does it make sense to you? So writing this separately helps us to clearly show and explain you how we are getting the solution. 
So the first term we need ax in the denominator. Correct? So what will I do? So we have sign ax over 1. We are going to multiply and divide by ax. Perfect. In the second term, we want bx. So we'll multiply and divide by bx. So that makes 1 only, right? So, so what we have here is something like this. Now that's an argument, right? So you could put this in bracket if it is forming some confusion. Okay. Now limit properties are being applied. So we can write this as limit x approaching 0 of sine ax over ax. So we are left with that ax. Okay, so let me write that ax separately. Now in this case, we will take the numerator bx and I am left with this bx here. So we are taking the, we are using this and putting it here. We place that one here. Do you see that part? So, so we get bx over sine bx. And uh, then we will find limit x approaches 0. Okay. Now here, x and x cancel. Do you see that part? x and x cancel. So we are left with a over b. And what you also know is the limit of these two is 1. Correct? So, so what we are left with is 1 time a over b times 1, which is a over b. So basically, it's the same ratio a over b. Look carefully. So it becomes easier to solve these questions for multiple choice questions, right? So if you are given options, it's a straightforward option. Now let's take the last example. We need to evaluate limit when x approaches 0 for 1 minus cos ax over 1 minus cos bx. So we'll try to derive the formula which can be applied here. You know the double angle formula which is cos let's say 2 uh, let's say cos 2 theta let me write theta instead right so it's equals to 1 minus 2 sine square theta right so we can rearrange and write this as 2 sine square theta equals to 1 minus cos 2 theta correct or if you have to write this in half angle formula you could write this as 2 sine square a if i replace 2 theta with a it becomes half a right so uh, minus cos of a right so what i've done here is uh, shown you equivalent half angle formula Do you see that part? So if you compare, if you compare, then capital A in our case is AX. Perfect. So we could actually rewrite the limit as limit X approaches 0. For the numerator now becomes 2 sine square AX by 2 does make sense half of this angle perfect divided by 2 sine square bx by 2 now 2 and 2 cancels so we could write this as limit x approaches 0 for sine square ax by 2 divided by sine square bx by 2. Um, this is squared, so we could do this also. We could do limit x approaches 0. We have sine ax by 2 divided by sine 
bx divided by 2 whole square. Perfect. Now, let us rearrange and find the limit. I'll put the bracket here. So we have sine ax divided by 2. Now to find this limit, I have to multiply and divide this by ax by 2. Right. So, uh, okay, so let's write ax by 2 divided by ax by 2, correct? The second expression here is, let me rewrite, sine bx by 2. So we have to multiply and divide by bx by 2. So we get bx by 2, we multiplied, and then we'll divide by bx by 2. Is that clear? Let's close the bracket and we'll square this. Perfect. Now, as you can clearly see, these terms here, x by 2 in the numerator, cancels with this x by 2 in the denominator. So, you're left with a over b, which are constants. Correct? So, and we have square of this. So, we have this as a over b limit x approaches 0 for sine ax by 2 over ax by 2 times limit x approaches 0 for sine, I mean, sorry, 1 over sine bx by 2, and this one is actually bx over 2. Okay. So we rearrange and write like this. Now these limits are 1, we are left with a over b whole square. Or the result is a square over b square. So what you notice is that the limit for such expression is related with the argument as such. Right? So that's a good conclusion and I hope that will help you to solve similar questions. Feel free to write your comments and share your views. And if you really like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.